So Allison tonight is going to be talking about tools and tips in navigating, um, navigating awakening spiritual abilities. She's also located here in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale, and she's known as the intuitive light guide. She's a healer, intuitive medium, mental health, and prevent and uh, medium. She specializes in mental health and preventing childhood abuse, and she's an advocate, writer, Reiki master, Akashic Records, card reader, and a reverend. She holds a master's of arts degree in dance movement, um, therapy, and counseling. She's a survivor of incest and, and complex and developmental trauma. Her healing journey awakened her spiritual abilities along with igniting a passion to help walk with others through the depth of trauma. She currently works as a therapist and a long-term goal and has a long-term goal of bridging mental health and spirituality together. And you can find her at innerlightremembrance.com. Inner so welcome to the stage. You have a, you have a half hour. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, and if you've been with us all day, like way to go. I'm starting to fade myself, but um, so yeah, as Sherry said, I'm going to be talking about just tools and tips in navigating awakening spiritual abilities. Um, also going to include, because this keeps coming up in interactions in the world, in interactions today, this also implies if you are an empath or a highly sensitive person as well, just because um, this world is awakening more and more. There is just consistent bombardment of intense, intense things that we're going through, things that are being revealed. So this, of course, is awakening us to a greater, greater extent. So I share this too because my spiritual abilities did not awaken until my early 20s and for me it was very overwhelming so i just am sharing what i've learned along the way from the teachers that i've had reading that i've done um, the tools that i utilize in my own life to help you feel more in control if you have these abilities that are awakening within you if you feel energy very intensely if you work with other people and you feel like you take on their energy, uh, these are all things that can help you. So for myself in my early 20s, I was just dealing with severe, severe depression. And the first thing that kind of started for me was I started to feel the presence of an energy outside of myself. And I felt like it was always holding my hand. Um, so I knew that I wasn't crazy. I was very spiritual and I started to feel like, okay, I feel like I'm co connecting with one of my guides. Like one of my guides is here with me in the dark. So at that time I started um, just reaching out for support. I did connect with a shaman who I studied with um, for about two years. And through that, I just kind of learned to tap into energy. Um, I began to realize that that energy, I could feel it was a female. Um, I eventually realized and connected more deeply and deeply with that energy, with that guide that was with me. And it was um, my grandmother. So um, that's just kind of one of the experiences that I had that was the first indicator of me connecting to more of that like spiritual energy because we all have guides that are with us. Um, it's just a matter of opening up to connect with them. Uh, so today, yeah, I'm going to kind of talk about ways to ground, ways to keep your energy protected, ways to keep yourself clear, and then ways that you can even connect. So I'll just kind of start with grounding because that's always a good place to start. Um, you don't want to like, if you have, are having like this spiritual awakening or have these abilities that are opening up, it can be real easy to like get pulled into that energy. Um, so that's why it's always good to start with just grounding and getting connected to the earth 
because it is good to open up spiritually as well, but you will want to be grounded as well. So just kind of like basic, the most powerful thing that you can do to get grounded is to get barefoot and connect with mother earth, connect with the ground. So even like, cause I like science too, like the earth gives us these free electrons that come up through our body and they help neutralize and deal with any kind of free radicals that we have in our body, which helps eliminate inflammation and disease. So just biologically going barefoot and connecting with the earth is doing things really powerfully for us physically, but also um, just doing that we're like connecting with that beautiful grounding energy of mother earth it can be even good to imagine roots growing from your own feet connecting to the core of the earth at least in my own experience um, of connecting to mother earth it's a very very loving energy very nurturing very expansive when the world feels overwhelming when things in my life feel overwhelming just going and connecting to the earth can just be this like beautiful loving, grounding presence that's always there so it's good to just if you've been like forgetting that like forgetting about connecting with the earth um this is just a little like reminder of it's important to get connected with this beautiful planet that we live on um so yeah, when you connect with the earth, what I like to imagine, I imagine the roots going down into connect to the core of the earth. I feel that like pull that tug. And then I just ask mother earth to take anything that's not serving me or anything I've absorbed from others and to just transmute it into the earth. The earth will take it, it will transform it. And then I ask the earth to fill me up with just like the most nourishing, loving, highest vibrational energy. So I sometimes, um, like I work as a therapist, so sometimes I even do that, um, just slip off my shoes, like go outside and do that exercise um, to just keep myself clear. You can easily pick up energies from other people if you are working in any kind of you know, healing profession, that it's good to make sure you're clearing yourself between meeting with people or exchanging energy with people. Um, if you can't go outside, you can always, visualization is just a very powerful tool too, that you can imagine those roots going into the earth, going through like, if you're on a 13 floor building, you can just imagine those earth, like those roots going through the building, connecting with the earth. Um, visualization is just a really powerful tool to like allow yourself to feel that grounding and that clearing. Um, you can also, if you don't have connection to the earth, you can get stones that you can hold on to. You can put them under your feet. You can go hug a tree. You can connect to the water. Um, but yeah. The earth is a powerful grounding tool and also clearing. So then also to just expand on clearing your own energy. Um, crystals are something that you can use to clear your energy. I'll give an example of some a practice that I utilize. Usually I'll do it when I come home from a day at work is I have, I have this like large selenite rod um, so selenite is one of the highest vibrational crystals that's out there, basically takes anything and just completely transforms it into the light. So I just like lay it on myself. I meditate a little bit. I, you know, ask anything that's not serving my highest and greatest good, please be sent to the selenite, please absorb it, like, please take it and transform it. So and I'll just lay like that for like five minutes and I will feel a complete shift in my energy. Um, so another practice that I utilize, usually I do this before I start my day, I actually do it in the car. 
I am paying attention while I'm driving. <laughs> but um, I usually will imagine some kind of energetic shield coming down around me. Usually it's a color. Um, so that is kind of like this protective little energy bubble that I imagine before I like go out into the world. I'm asking for this kind of shield, this extra shield of protection around me. Um, sometimes, yeah, I will take on a color. Sometimes it will take on like a element of the earth, like water. Like sometimes I'll imagine this like waterfall just surrounding me. And so then it's like this energetic protection I have with me that if I'm dealing with a difficult person, if I'm dealing with a client who's going through like a lot of pain, you know, I have this shield that I can imagine. I'm not absorbing that energy into my own body. Um, and then just like another good practice to do, um, which maybe it's, I think, a pretty common one is using sage uh, to clear just your own aura. You can use it to clear your home and your home space as well. Um, yeah, sage is just like this ancient, like, uh, herbal medicine bundle that you can use. Um, and yeah, it's just similar, like, it's always good to like have that intention you're saying, like, when you are doing any kind of clearing of energy of like, I, like, please clear anything that's not serving my highest and greatest good, like, that's usually kind of a phrase that I use, anything that is dark or dense that is mine that I no longer need or that I'm holding from someone else, like, please transform it into light um yeah it's good to like sage your home space too of just clearing that energy occasionally because things can get built up there and then just yeah we've kind of talked a little bit about just things you can do to protect yourself um but some other good practices like if you feel like you don't have very good boundaries or like energetic boundaries there's like an aura strengthening exercise that you can do so it's like kind of just a meditation that you can even lead yourself through where you just kind of get quiet you connect to your breath you feel your energy and your aura like wherever it is, like a little couple inches outside of your body. And then you just start to imagine it like a couple feet outside of your body, filling up the whole room, filling up your whole town, your state, your country, like literally until you are the galaxy. And then you can kind of bring it back in. So I'll just like personally share I did that one because I felt like my boundaries had been very violated, which then made me not have like a very strong aura, which then I felt like I could just get pushed around so easily um, from like just people in general, but also feeling so pushed around from like the energy that I was experiencing in the world. So doing that aura strengthening exercise can just help you feel your own energetic body and feel in control of like making it really expansive and then just also like controlling it and bringing it in. Um, you can always call in different guides archangels, angels, spirit guides. Um, I was maybe going to do a quick thing of just trying to connect with a spirit guide of support if that's something you've never connected with. Because um, we are always supported from like a spiritual perspective. 
So Archangel Michael is a very strong um, Archangel that many people call on because he is the Archangel of protection. Um, but we always have that spiritual support around us that you can like really lean on if you feel like you need extra kind of protection. Um, and then just connecting. So as I said, it's good to get grounded to make sure that you're clear, that your energy is clear, that you're not holding like anything from anybody else, anything too heavy from yourself. Um, it's good to ask for protection and then just connecting. So this can look different and um, can take on many different forms. I mean, I'll just give like an example, a way of connecting, or if you're looking to, um, well, yeah, I mean, we can practice one of just, I mean, if you're used to meditating, just getting grounded, connecting to your breath. As you connect to your breath and your body, it helps to quiet your mind. I guess maybe I'll just go into the um, experiential right now. Okay, so if just wherever you're at in your space, if you want to just, if you're sitting, if you're laying down, but just feel yourself like the weight of your body, whatever you're sitting on, if your feet are on the ground, if you want to close your eyes, you can do that or keep a soft gaze. And then just start by connecting with your breath. So we're just being mindful of our breathing. If thoughts come into your mind, just notice them without judgment and bring your attention back to the breath. If you're distracted by any feelings or sensations or pain, just notice it without judgment and come back to your breath. Okay, then imagine roots growing from the bottom of your feet, traveling into the center of the earth, till they arrive and you feel almost like a tug, feeling that connection to Mother Earth. Now with your breath, anything you're holding in your whole being, in your body, that's no longer serving you, imagine breathing it out, seeing it travel through your body, down your legs, through your feet, all the way to the center of the earth. Just releasing, letting Mother Earth hold it for you and transform it. Now with another exhale, just anything you're holding, anything you're holding from anyone in your day-to-day -day interactions in your life. Just on the exhale, once again, just release, imagine it, just see it moving through your body, through your legs, down your feet, down through the roots into the core of the earth. And just do that, you know, as many times as you need till you feel like you have released everything that is no longer serving you, 
any heaviness that you're holding on to. And then on the next inhalation, just allow Mother Earth to fill you up with that beautiful energy of the earth. So imagine it just coming up through your feet. So in the other direction, up through the feet, legs, through your pelvis, torso, chest, arms, all the way up through the head. Receiving this beautiful energy. Then you can just allow yourself to do that as many more times as you need to. So taking another deep breath in, breathing up that nourishing, loving, unconditional loving energy of Mother Earth, allowing it to nourish you, fill you up. So from this place of groundedness and clear and kind of a flush of uh, clarity, emptying, now I just invite you to open your third eye. Don't think too much about it, just allow. And just allow yourself to let in, to see in the distance, a guide of support for you walking towards you. Someone setting the intention of someone who is here for your highest and greatest good and is of the light and only the light. good to just let go of any fear, to trust and allow. Because when you set the intention of something that's for your highest and greatest good and the light and the only of the light, it is going to only be loving, deeply, deeply, unconditionally loving. So if you have connected with a guide, allow them to maybe give a message to you tonight of something you need to hear. And you're welcome to say anything back to them. You can exchange a dialogue. You can just feel their energy, whatever it is you need. Just trust your own intuition of this experience. And then once you feel like that interaction is complete, you can give any kind of thanks or gratitude to your guide that showed up today for support. Know that you can call on them anytime, that you can try this exercise again. They may be the one that shows up. There may be someone else that shows up, but know that they gave you the exact message or experience that you needed in this moment. Okay. And then when you're ready, you can just start feeling your feet on the ground, your body in the chair, 
on your couch, wherever you are. Just opening your eyes slowly, bringing back in the space that you're in currently. So yeah, I mean, just in terms of connecting um, with your intuition, with mediumship, um, I mean, with intuition, there's these different clairs that exist, like there's clairvoyance, which is visions, clairaudience, which is hearing things, clairsentience, which is clair um, feeling. Uh, I think it's like claircognizance, just this like inner knowing. I think there's even ones about like smell and taste too. So as you kind of practice dabbling in that more, like for me, I did these intuition development classes. So the more I kind of practice with using my intuition, you realize like what kind of clairs are the strongest for you, like where your, your abilities kind of lie. Um, the more you practice these things, the stronger it gets. Um, for me in my life, connecting with my intuition and asking for spiritual guidance and support and going within and looking for the answers is like what leads my life now, I feel like more than anything. And I, I feel like a lot of people are like hungry for that too, because it does, it, it brings a lot of truth and love and um depth and all kinds of things <laughs> but those are the words that are coming to me so yeah i guess those are the kind of the things that i wanted to share um does anybody have any questions or comments or or anyone want to share what the what guide came up for you or what they had to share with you tonight you don't have to but thank you for your message grace Are we complete? Are they giving you feedback? Okay. Um, let's see. He just said I experienced a feeling of peace and compassion. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, connecting with your spiritual abilities, as we all have spiritual abilities, just can bring in this whole other layer of beauty and unconditional love and yeah, peace, compassion. So it's a really beautiful thing to connect with. Nope. Okay. I think that Sherry's gone, but Allison, I just want to say thank you. I experienced it was just a calmness and um, I appreciate the, the meditation and the advice for everything. So that's what, thank you. Yeah. You see me? Thank you. So yeah, I don't know where Sherry went because I think that we are at the end of our fair here so but thanks for joining us if you've been here all day or just kind of bopped in and out
Um, I was like, is there anything else I should share? But um, no, I think we're. Well, thanks, Mary Rose, for sharing that. I guess while we're waiting for Sherry, okay, we're making our way to the main room. Oh, I have Nicole. Yeah, um, so you were doing grounding exercises. Um, the other thing was um, picking up other people's energy and doing protection. Like I know that I was told to imagine myself in a bubble of white light and to put mirrors on the outside and to send anything back less than the light. Um, do you know of anything else to do to stop negative energy from coming into our space? Um, yeah, you're definitely right on point there because I, I did share the thing that I do every day, um, like basically any time before I go out into the world, um, is exactly what you were talking about. Like I imagine this bubble of light around me and for myself, when I imagine it, like um, sometimes I imagine it taking on a specific color. Like I, I'm very intuitive with it. Like I'm just like, okay, I want my bubble of light around me and then just allowing it to be whatever it needs to be that day. And a lot of times I have no idea why it's that way. Like one time it even became like bubble wrap around me. Mm -hmm. And then it was interesting because that day I felt like um, there was like a lot of jabs coming at me. So the bubble wrap then like made sense why it like had energetically turned into bubble wrap that day. Um, but I also think like with the aura strengthening, I had talked about, I don't know if you were here for that, Nicole, but as you become like really just energetically strong within yourself, it's like, no, I'm not going to accept anything that's not serving me. You know that you kind of don't even need a bubble because just your whole aura exudes that energy. Yeah. Cool. Which, yeah. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm there, but that's the goal. <laughs> so we can utilize like the other skills and things till we get to that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I think. Yeah. I'm just trying to get the other speakers here to the room. So you're good. Um, did you did we want to do my door prize, Sherry? Yeah, absolutely. I did write down a number. Okay. You're so prepared. Great. So guys, put your number in the chat from zero to a hundred. And we have a door prize. And what are you going to be doing a reading as a door prize or Akashic Records? Door prize, one hour session, uh, 30 minutes. No, that's a net, you and your pet. <laughs> door prize is a Reiki session. Reiki, long distance or in person, either one. What if they're local? I have somewhere I can meet them. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. So if you're in South Florida, you're lucky. All right, guys, put a number from zero to 100 in the chat. And, uh, you know, win a Reiki session with Allison. She's right in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, so uh, I'll do a five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, they're still, they're still jumping in there. Oh, Judith would love to win that because she's right here in Fort Lauderdale. Wouldn't that be something? Okay, oh, numbers are still coming in. Great, beautiful. 
okay anymore. Last door prize of the night, and then we're going to have a panel. And thank you everyone for being here. It's our last 40 minutes, and we did it. Thank you for your support. We do this every month on the last Saturday. So the 30th of July will be the next one. And I'm always looking for new speakers, uh, authors, thought leaders, inspirational, um, motivational musicians. Um, you know, send them my way. I'd love to give everyone the platform. Um, so, okay, we got a bunch of numbers, guys. All right, we'll do a five, four, three, two, and one. And then what is your number, Allison? Um, 99. Adrian won it. Of course, he's my friend. Really? Yeah. That's Adrian. We're meant to connect. We've been trying to connect for a long time. So, yeah. oh, how do you like that? Well, congratulations. Are you local? Yeah, he lives. Oh, in isn't that great? Well, Dee's local. Nicole's local. Uh, who else is local? Judith. Judith is local. Uh, Francis is local. Uh, Rachel is local. Laura, uh, Laura is local. A lot of Florida people. Thank you. Look at all the Florida people here. Wendy, are you Florida too? Wonder where you're from. Are you asking me? Yeah. I'm from uh, Virginia. Virginia. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me um, every month. I appreciate your support. Yeah. You're welcome. I enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. We have some new faces. Welcome, Grace and Carol and Jay. And uh, good to see you all day, Dee, my friend. Great. 